Nonlinear Thinking, Little Things That Can Change Your Life. Written by Kelvin W. Nathan. Published by Audiobooks Office. Introduction. In a world that relentlessly pushes us towards linearity, clear beginnings, middles, and ends, what if the secret to transformative change was not in the big leaps, but in the seemingly insignificant, tiny steps? Nonlinear thinking. Little things that can change your life is an invitation to shift your perspective and embrace a mode of thinking that the greatest innovators, leaders, and thinkers have in common, yet is rarely explored in the hustle of everyday routines. Nonlinear thinking is about making connections where none seem to exist. It's about understanding that life doesn't necessarily follow a straight path, and often it's the smallest, most unexpected actions that lead to significant changes. This book is not just an exploration, it's a practical guide that will challenge you to tweak small aspects of your daily life, leading to profound, unexpected outcomes. Imagine you are walking through a dense forest, where the path is not just one straight line but a series of intertwining trails, each leading to various destinations unknown. Some trails are winding, others are looping back on themselves and one small turn can bring you to a completely different part of the forest. This book is that subtle turn, a shift in thought that opens up a myriad of possibilities and perspectives. Through engaging stories, groundbreaking research, and transformative insights, you will learn how small changes in the way you think can drastically alter your end destination. Each chapter of this book introduces a principle of nonlinear thinking illustrated with real-life examples ranging from how a simple change in morning routine can lead to a major career breakthrough, to how a random conversation with a stranger can unlock a revolutionary idea. You'll discover the butterfly effect of thoughts a flutter of a seemingly minor idea that can give rise to a hurricane of innovation and creativity. Nonlinear thinking Little Things That Can Change Your Life encourages you to break free from conventional patterns. It dares you to question and adapt, to think and rethink, to connect dots differently from how you've been taught. By the end of this book, you will not only understand the power of nonlinear thinking, but will also be equipped with tools to harness this power, allowing you to see and seize life-changing opportunities hidden in the small moments of life. Welcome to a journey that promises to expand your mind and potential in ways you never anticipated. Welcome to the world of nonlinear thinking, where the little things aren't just little anymore, they're everything. So you're curious about nonlinear thinking and how it can impact your life. That's a step in the right direction. You see, nonlinear thinking is all about seeing connections where others don't, challenging the status quo, and embracing uncertainty. It's a game changer, fostering creativity and enhancing problem-solving skills. But how do you actually cultivate this mindset? What are some actionable steps you can take to start thinking outside the box? Stick around, we're about to unpack this fascinating topic, leaving no stone unturned. For more information about the ebook version of this audio, check the video description or visit audiobooksoffice.com. We noticed that 69% of you who listen to our video are not yet subscribed to the channel. Please help support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and liking the video. Thanks for inspiring us to create more content for you. Chapter 1. Embracing the Power of Nonlinearity As you plunge into the world of nonlinear thinking, it's essential to embrace its inherent power. Nonlinear thinking, contrary to its linear counterpart, doesn't follow a straight line. Rather, it navigates through webs of connections, branching out in various directions. You're not limited to sequential thoughts, you're free to explore multiple angles, perspectives, and possibilities. Research indicates that nonlinear thinking fosters innovation and creativity. Stanford University's study on design thinking, a type of nonlinear thinking, showed it dramatically boosts the creative output. When you're not bound by a linear path, you can generate a multitude of ideas, enhancing your problem-solving skills. You'll find that nonlinear thinkers often thrive in unpredictable situations. 
They're comfortable with ambiguity and uncertainty, which is especially beneficial in today's constantly changing world. A study published in the Journal of Business and Psychology found that nonlinear thinkers are more adaptable and better at handling complex situations than linear thinkers. Nonlinear thinking also allows you to see connections and patterns that others might miss. You can synthesize disparate pieces of information into a cohesive whole, providing a more exhaustive understanding of the issue at hand. This attribute was celebrated in Steve Jobs' famous Connecting the Dots speech at Stanford in 2005. It's important to remember, though, that nonlinear thinking isn't about ignoring logic or structure. It's about embracing flexibility and open-mindedness. Chapter 2. Identifying Linear Thinking Patterns Before you can fully embrace the power of nonlinear thinking, it's helpful to recognize and understand linear thinking patterns that you may be unconsciously following. Linear thinking is characterized by its step-by-step -step approach to problem solving and decision making. You may see things in a strict sequential order with a clear beginning, middle and end. This form of thinking often entails a cause and effect mentality where one action directly leads to a subsequent result. Take a moment to ponder how you approach challenges or new information. Do you tend to break things down into smaller parts to understand the whole? This is an attribute of linear thinking known as reductionism. It's a useful tool in many situations, but it can also limit your perspective as it favors the parts over the interconnectedness of the whole. Another common pattern of linear thinking is binary or dichotomous thinking. This is when you perceive situations, people, or ideas as either or, black or white, with no gray area in between. This simplifies complex situations but can also lead to oversimplification and missed opportunities for deeper understanding. Finally, linear thinking often involves logical progression and rationality. You might prefer logical arguments and evidence-based conclusions. While this is vital in many contexts, it can prevent you from pondering unconventional ideas or solutions that don't fit into your logical framework. In order to shift towards nonlinear thinking, start by recognizing these patterns in your thought processes. Identifying them is the first step towards expanding your thinking and embracing a more holistic, flexible, and creative approach to life. Chapter 3. Breaking Free from Conventional Wisdom The path to nonlinear thinking often requires challenging conventional wisdom. It's about breaking free from the traditional thought patterns that have been ingrained in you over the years. This isn't about disrespecting or dismissing time-tested knowledge, but rather about questioning its applicability to every situation. Research shows that conventional wisdom can often lead to tunnel vision. You're conditioned to think within the confines of established norms and beliefs, which can hinder your ability to see potential alternatives. For instance, the common belief that hard work equals success might make you overlook the importance of smart work or creativity. To break free, you must first recognize the influence of conventional wisdom on your thought process. Reflect on your beliefs and assumptions. Are they based on facts or are they just widely accepted opinions? Remember, even widely held beliefs can be flawed. History is full of examples where conventional wisdom was proven wrong, like the flat earth concept or the belief that heavier than air flying machines were impossible. Next, actively seek out differing perspectives and alternative approaches. This doesn't mean you should blindly accept every new idea, but rather that you should entertain them long enough to fully understand them. This practice can help you develop a more open, flexible mindset. Breaking free from conventional wisdom doesn't mean rejecting it entirely. Instead, it's about adopting a more critical, open-minded approach to thinking. This shift can make a significant difference in your personal growth, problem-solving abilities, and overall life satisfaction. Chapter 4. Cultivating a Curious Mindset Embracing curiosity can be a powerful tool in fostering nonlinear thinking. 
It's not merely about asking questions, but about cultivating a mindset that's constantly in pursuit of knowledge, no matter how trivial or complex the subject might be. This mindset is a stepping stone towards nonlinear thinking, which is all about connecting dots that aren't apparently linked. Research suggests that the human brain is a pattern detection machine, always seeking connections and meaning in everything it processes. Curiosity fuels this innate ability, allowing you to uncover unconventional solutions and ideas. When you're curious, you're open to exploring unfamiliar territories and challenging pre-existing beliefs, a key aspect of nonlinear thinking. So how do you cultivate a curious mindset? It begins with an understanding that every piece of knowledge has value. Don't dismiss anything as unimportant. Be it a casual conversation, an article you're reading, or a lesson from history, each has the potential to spark an idea or a solution. Next, practice active curiosity. Don't just passively absorb information. Instead, question its validity, its origin, and its implications. This questioning attitude doesn't mean you're doubting everything, rather. You're engaging deeply with the information, breaking it down and examining it from different angles. Lastly, embrace uncertainty. The very essence of curiosity lies in the unknown. It's about stepping out of your comfort zone, embracing the unexpected, and relishing the journey of discovery. Remember, in non-linear thinking, the journey is just as important as the destination. Keep your mind open and let curiosity guide your thinking process. Chapter 5. Practicing Mindfulness in Daily Life Mindfulness practice, a cornerstone of non-linear thinking, can act as a game-changer in your daily life. It's not just a buzzword, it's a scientifically backed method of tuning into your surroundings, thoughts, feelings, and sensations in the present moment. By cultivating an awareness of your experience as it unfolds, you're more likely to spot patterns, connections, and nuances that you'd otherwise miss. Start by setting aside a few minutes each day for mindfulness meditation. It doesn't require any special equipment or location, you can do it wherever you're comfortable. Sit quietly, close your eyes, and focus on your breath. If your mind wanders and it will, that's okay, bring your attention back to your breathing. This simple act can substantially improve your capacity for nonlinear thinking. Incorporate mindfulness into your daily routines too. Eating, walking, even brushing your teeth can become opportunities for mindfulness practice. The trick is to fully engage with the task at hand not letting your mind drift towards past regrets or future anxieties. You'll find that practicing mindfulness strengthens your ability to switch perspectives and explore diverse viewpoints. It also encourages patience and acceptance, two qualities that are essential for productive nonlinear thinking. Chapter 6. Challenging Assumptions and Biases Unearth your deeply held assumptions and biases they often serve as roadblocks to nonlinear thinking. Unconsciously, you might be wedded to certain beliefs or preconceptions that limit your thinking process and hinder innovative ideas. These mental constraints can put you in a box, preventing you from exploring unconventional paths. According to a study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, Biases can profoundly impact decision-making and problem-solving skills. You're more likely to stick to traditional methods and dismiss novel approaches if you're influenced by cognitive biases. For instance, confirmation bias, where you favor information that confirms your existing beliefs, can blind you from seeing other potential solutions. Challenging these assumptions and biases is a critical step in developing nonlinear thinking. When you question the status quo and analyze your thought patterns critically, you're opening your mind to a spectrum of possibilities. You're allowing yourself to see beyond the obvious, to connect dots that may seem unrelated, and to come up with solutions that are both creative and effective. You can start by acknowledging that biases exist, then consciously work on identifying and challenging them. Ask yourself, why do I think this way? Is there another perspective I could consider? 
Reflecting on these questions can help you break free from cognitive traps and pave the way for nonlinear thinking. Chapter 7 Fostering a Culture of Creativity Once you've taken steps to challenge your assumptions and biases, it becomes easier to create an environment that nurtures creativity. Encouraging nonlinear thinking is about fostering a culture where creativity flourishes. By promoting diverse perspectives, you can generate a plethora of ideas that challenge the status quo. One effective way to cultivate a creative culture is by embracing risk. In a study by Adobe, 74% of educators agreed that people must take risks to be creative, but only 22% felt they were living up to this potential. So don't be afraid to take chances. Failure provides valuable lessons and can lead to innovative solutions. Building a culture of creativity also involves offering space for independent thinking. Research from the University of Pennsylvania found that individuals generate more ideas when they work alone than in a group. Hence, balance between solitary work and collaboration is vital for creativity. Moreover, communication plays a pivotal role in fostering creativity. Creating a platform where ideas are shared openly allows that everyone's perspectives are considered. A study from Stanford University supports this, stating that diverse teams are more innovative because they leverage unique viewpoints. Finally, remember to celebrate creativity. Recognizing and rewarding innovative ideas and efforts can stimulate more creative thinking. A study by the University of California found that positive reinforcement boosts creative output substantially. These steps can help you foster a culture of creativity, enabling nonlinear thinking and potentially leading to breakthroughs that can change your life. Chapter 8 Navigating Ambiguity with Confidence Traversing the murky waters of ambiguity can be challenging, but it's not an insurmountable task. Rather, it's an opportunity to engage your nonlinear thinking capabilities, effectively dealing with uncertainty. The key is to approach ambiguity with confidence, acknowledging that it's a natural part of life and decision-making. You can start by defining what you know and what you don't. While it may seem simple, research suggests that recognizing known unknowns and unknown uncertainty can greatly enhance your decision-making capabilities. You're not expected to have all the answers immediately. Instead, you're encouraged to be curious, ask questions, and seek information that can help you navigate the ambiguous situation. Next, it's important to build and rely on a network of diverse perspectives. Studies show that differing viewpoints can provide fresh insights and innovative solutions to complex problems. By embracing diversity, you're better equipped to handle ambiguity as diverse inputs often reveal novel ways to interpret and handle uncertain situations. Lastly, remember that ambiguity isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, ambiguity can be a powerful catalyst for growth and innovation. It's the ambiguity that often drives us to question the status quo, explore new ideas, and ultimately make breakthroughs. Chapter 9 Embracing the beauty of uncertainty. Although it may seem counterintuitive, embracing the beauty of uncertainty can substantially bolster your problem-solving skills and creativity. Human brains are evolutionarily wired to seek certainty as it equates to safety and survival. However, in a rapidly changing world, this predisposition can limit your adaptability and innovative thinking. Research shows that ambiguity stimulates the anterior cingulate cortex in your brain, a region associated with creativity. When you're unsure, your brain starts connecting unrelated ideas, fostering creative problem solving. Consequently, uncertainty isn't always a roadblock. It can be an avenue to discovery and innovation. Now, you may wonder, how can I embrace uncertainty? Start by reframing your perspective. See uncertainty as an opportunity for growth rather than a threat. This shift in mindset fosters resilience and boosts your ability to cope with unpredictable situations. Next, practice mindfulness. 
Being present in the moment reduces anxiety about the unknown and enhances your ability to respond effectively to changes. A 2014 study published in Frontiers in Psychology found that mindfulness training improved participants' cognitive flexibility, a key trait for nonlinear thinking. Lastly, embrace lifelong learning. The more knowledge you acquire, the more tools you'll have to navigate uncertainty. Education isn't a linear path to a fixed destination, but a continuous journey of exploration and discovery. Chapter 10. Unlearning what you know. Building off this idea of embracing uncertainty, let's now explore the concept of unlearning what you know. Unlearning isn't about forgetting, but about the ability to choose an alternative mental model or paradigm. It's about being open to new perspectives and possibilities, even if they conflict with established ideas. Research conducted by the University of California suggests that the capacity to unlearn is a critical aspect of adapting to change and fostering innovation. You're not deleting knowledge, but rather challenging and reshaping it. This process can be uncomfortable, as it often calls into question firmly held beliefs. But it's a necessary discomfort, especially when those beliefs limit your understanding or growth. One effective method for unlearning involves reflection and questioning. Regularly question your assumptions, challenge your beliefs, and actively seek out information that contradicts your understanding. You could start by asking, why do I believe this or could there be other perspectives? Another technique is the use of mindfulness meditation. A study published in the Journal of Cognitive Enhancement found that mindfulness can help individuals become more open to new ideas, enhancing their ability to unlearn outdated or incorrect information. Unlearning doesn't mean you'll lose your past knowledge or experiences. Instead, it's about making room for new information and perspectives that can enrich your thought processes and decision-making skills. It's one of the cornerstones of nonlinear thinking. Ensuring you're not confined to a single path, but are open to exploring various directions. Chapter 11. The Art of Lateral Thinking Diving into the art of lateral thinking, it's vital to understand that this approach is about solving problems through an indirect and creative method. It's more than just thinking outside the box. It requires you to dismantle the box completely, take a step back, and consider alternatives that mightn't appear logical or linear at first glance. Lateral thinking, a term coined by psychologist Edward de Bono in 1967, is a deliberate process. You have to make an effort to break free from traditional problem-solving methods, which typically involve a step-by-step -step sequential process. Instead, you'll need to embrace ambiguity, be open to unconventional ideas, and resist the urge to revert to familiar patterns of thought. What might this look like in practice? Let's consider a problem that seems unsolvable. Rather than tackling it head-on, you might start by questioning the problem itself. Is there a different way to frame it? Can you break it into smaller, more manageable pieces? Could an entirely different problem be the real issue at hand? Keep in mind that lateral thinking isn't about finding the correct answer. It's about exploring a multitude of options, some of which may seem absurd or irrelevant. The goal is to stimulate creative thought and foster innovation, not to arrive at the most logical or expected solution. Chapter 12. Making Connections Between Unrelated Things In the domain of nonlinear thinking, your ability to bridge the gap between seemingly unrelated concepts can be a game changer. It's about seeing beyond the surface, identifying patterns, and making unexpected connections. This capacity to associate diverse elements can ignite innovative solutions and create new perspectives. Academics and researchers suggest that this thinking style is rooted in creativity, curiosity, and a willingness to venture into the unknown. It's not about forcing connections, but rather allowing your mind to freely explore possibilities. According to a study by the University of California, regular practice of this can enhance problem-solving skills 
and even stimulate intellectual growth. So how do you strengthen this ability? Start by broadening your knowledge base. Read widely, explore various disciplines, embrace diverse experiences. The more information you accumulate, the more material your brain has to work with. Engage in activities that promote creativity like art, music, or even daydreaming. These can help reveal your subconscious, enabling you to perceive links where others may not. Next, practice mindfulness. Being present allows you to observe minute details, aiding in the identification of patterns and relationships. Mindfulness meditation, as per a Harvard study, can improve focus and increase your capacity for making unique connections. Lastly, challenge your assumptions. Don't let preconceived notions limit your thinking. You'll be surprised how often unrelated things connect when you view them with an open mind. Chapter 13. How to Ask Better Questions Shifting your perspective to see connections where others mightn't is only part of the equation in nonlinear thinking. Another key component is the ability to ask better questions. This isn't about merely asking more questions, but refining the quality of those inquiries. Research indicates that effective questioning can substantially enhance your nonlinear thinking skills. So how do you cultivate this skill? Start by focusing on open-ended questions, those that can't be answered with a simple yes or no. These types of questions spark deeper thought and encourage exploration beyond the surface level. Next, practice curiosity. Albert Einstein once said, I have no special talents. I'm only passionately curious embrace this mindset. Don't just accept things at face value. Ask why and how more often. This fosters a deeper understanding and allows you to see connections that aren't readily apparent. Also, refrain from leading questions, those that subtly prompt the respondent to answer in a certain way. These questions can limit your viewpoint and hinder the discovery of new connections or solutions. Lastly, don't be afraid of silence. After asking your question, let it hang in the air. Resist the urge to fill the silence or rush to an answer. This pause allows both you and the respondent time to think deeply and consider the question from different angles. Chapter 14. Seeking out diverse perspectives. Beyond the confines of your own perspective, a world of diverse viewpoints exists that can drastically enhance your nonlinear thinking. The key here is to actively seek out these viewpoints, engage with them, and use them to inform your own thought processes. Research has consistently shown that exposure to different perspectives can lead to more innovative, creative solutions to problems. It can break down barriers, challenge biases, and foster a more inclusive mindset. A study published in the Journal of Experimental Social Psychology found that individuals who are exposed to diverse perspectives are more likely to engage in creative problem solving and generate a greater number of original ideas. So how can you seek out diverse perspectives? It starts with stepping outside your comfort zone. Engage in conversations with people who possess different backgrounds, experiences, and beliefs. Read books and articles that challenge your existing viewpoints. Attend lectures, workshops, and seminars that cover unfamiliar topics. It's also important to practice active listening. When engaging with diverse perspectives, don't just hear the words, truly understand the meaning behind them. Ask questions, seek clarification, and avoid making assumptions. Finally, reflect on the new perspectives you've encountered. How do they differ from your own? What can you learn from them? How can they enhance your nonlinear thinking? Chapter 15. The Power of Reframing Problems Harnessing the power of reframing problems can substantially boost your nonlinear thinking. Rather than viewing an issue as a roadblock, you can see it as an opportunity for improvement or growth. This shift in perspective can lead to more innovative solutions and can change your life in small yet significant ways. Reframing problems involves a cognitive process where you challenge your own assumptions, perceptions, and interpretations. It's about changing your personal narrative around the problem, 
and it's a critical skill in nonlinear thinking. Studies have shown that reframing can lead to increased creativity, resilience, and problem-solving capabilities. Consider a situation where you're facing a serious challenge at work. The traditional approach might be to view this as a negative situation and stress about the potential outcomes. However, by reframing the problem, you could see this as an opportunity to showcase your problem-solving skills and improve your performance. The key to successful reframing is to remain open-minded and flexible in your thinking. It's not about denying reality or problems, but rather about exploring different perspectives and potential solutions. This involves a level of emotional intelligence and self-awareness, as you need to recognize when your current frame isn't serving you well. Chapter 16. Moving Beyond Binary Thinking In the domain of nonlinear thinking, it's crucial to move past the limitations of binary thinking. Binary thinking, the tendency to perceive situations as black or white, yes or no, right or wrong, often limits your potential to solve problems creatively. It constricts your thought process into a fixed path, preventing you from exploring the multitude of possibilities that exist beyond the obvious. To broaden your thinking, you need to explore the gray areas that binary thinking often overlooks. These are the areas where creativity flourishes and innovation happens. Research from the field of cognitive psychology suggests that individuals who think beyond binary terms are often more adaptable, resilient, and innovative. They're better equipped to tackle complex problems and navigate uncertain situations. The first step to move beyond binary thinking is to recognize it. Be aware of your propensity to categorize situations into two extremes. Once you're aware, challenge this tendency. Ask yourself what other possibilities exist. Encourage yourself to think of at least three alternatives to any binary choice. Secondly, cultivate an open mindset. Embrace ambiguity and uncertainty. It's vital not to have an immediate answer. Sometimes the best solutions emerge from a state of not knowing. Lastly, practice. Like any skill, moving beyond binary thinking takes time and practice. Start small. Apply this approach to everyday decisions, and gradually you'll find it easier to think in nonlinear terms in more complex situations. Chapter 17. Developing your intuition. As you challenge binary thinking and start exploring the gray areas, you may find your intuition playing a more significant role. Intuition, often misunderstood as a mystical force, is actually grounded in your brain's ability to rapidly process information. This unconscious reasoning helps you make decisions without needing to dissect every detail. To develop your intuition, you need to pay attention to your gut feelings, those immediate emotional reactions to situations or decisions. Research by the Journal of Experimental Psychology suggests that these gut feelings, or effective forecasts, are often more accurate than we give them credit for. They're your brain's way of saying, hey, I've seen this before and here's how I think it'll play out. Next, you need to engage in reflective practice. This involves taking time to think about your actions, decisions, and their outcomes. Reflective practice helps you identify patterns and learn from experiences, thereby enhancing your intuitive abilities. Additionally, embracing uncertainty is key in developing your intuition. Uncertainty forces the brain to rely more on intuition, as suggested by a study published in the Journal of Judgment and Decision Making. Hence, you shouldn't shy away from ambiguous situations but rather see them as opportunities to strengthen your intuitive muscle. Failure, on the other hand, often perceived as a dead end, actually plays a pivotal role in personal and professional growth. You might cringe at the thought of failing, but it's a necessary stepping stone to success. Indeed, research shows that those who experience failure are often better equipped to face future challenges as they develop a deeper understanding of their limitations and potential. Consider the findings of a study conducted by Stanford University. The researchers found that students who'd failed at a task 
and then reflected on the experience were more likely to succeed in subsequent tasks than those who hadn't experienced failure. Failure, it seems, isn't just a roadblock but a learning opportunity. But how exactly does failure contribute to growth? Well, it's all about perspective. When you fail, you're forced to confront the reality of the situation. You can't gloss over your weaknesses or ignore the areas that need improvement. Instead, you must take a hard look at where you went wrong, identify your mistakes, and devise a plan to overcome them. Moreover, failure often sparks creativity. When a strategy or approach doesn't work, you're pushed to think outside the box and come up with innovative solutions. This kind of nonlinear thinking is essential for personal and professional development. Chapter 18. Building Resilience in the Face of Uncertainty Charting life's uncertainties can feel like sailing a ship in uncharted waters. However, building resilience, a critical tenet of nonlinear thinking, can serve as your compass. Resilience isn't just about bouncing back from adversity, it's about adapting and growing amid uncertainty. It's a dynamic process that requires you to build your emotional and cognitive flexibility. According to a study by the American Psychological Association, resilience is fostered by maintaining a positive attitude, having a strong support network, and being able to manage strong feelings and impulses. You've got to cultivate a mindset that views challenges not as insurmountable problems, but as opportunities for growth. Embrace the fact that the world is unpredictable, and you'll be better equipped to navigate it. Instead of trying to predict every single twist and turn, focus on becoming more adaptable. It's also important to build your emotional resilience. Acknowledge your emotions without letting them control your actions. Studies have shown that emotional resilience can reduce the risk of anxiety and depression, enabling you to handle stress more effectively. Lastly, don't overlook the importance of a support network. Surround yourself with people who can offer both emotional and practical support. They can provide different perspectives, challenge your thinking, and help you see solutions that you may not have considered. In essence, building resilience in the face of uncertainty isn't just about surviving tough times. It's about learning, growing, and thriving, no matter what life throws at you. Chapter 19 Creating Space for Reflection While it's crucial to build resilience and adaptability, creating space for reflection is equally important in the domain of nonlinear thinking. Reflection provides the mental breathing room for you to recognize patterns, dig deeper into complex issues, and explore new perspectives. It's not merely a passive activity, but a proactive one that refines your thought process. Researchers from Harvard Business School have found that learning from direct experience can be more effective if coupled with reflection. By deliberately setting aside time to think about what you've observed, experienced, or learned, you're enhancing your cognitive abilities. It's like a mental workout that strengthens the muscles of your mind. But how exactly do you create this space? A simple, Yet effective strategy is to schedule contemplation time into your daily routine. This doesn't have to be long, even a few minutes can make a significant difference. Use this time to review your experiences, analyze your decisions, and ponder on possibilities. You might find it beneficial to write down your thoughts or have a quiet conversation with yourself. Another method is to create a physical space that promotes contemplation. This could be a quiet corner in your home, a peaceful outdoor spot, or even a certain seat at your local cafe. The key is to find a place where you can focus without distractions. And remember, reflection isn't about reaching a specific goal or finding the right answer. It's about exploring the terrain of your mind, discovering new insights, and fostering an environment conducive to nonlinear thinking. In the next section, will examine the importance of self-awareness in this process. Chapter 20, The Importance of Self-Awareness. Diving into the sphere of self-awareness, 
it becomes clear that it plays a pivotal role in nonlinear thinking. As the cornerstone to understanding yourself and your reactions to different situations, self-awareness allows you to identify patterns in your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. These patterns often serve as the basis for nonlinear thinking, where perception isn't merely linear but a complex web of interconnected ideas and insights. Research indicates that self-aware individuals are more likely to approach problems creatively. They're adept at identifying their biases, preconceived notions, and emotional responses, enabling them to step back and view situations from a fresh perspective. This ability to distance oneself from one's habitual thought processes is key to nonlinear thinking. Moreover, being self-aware helps you to recognize when you're stuck in conventional thought patterns. You're better equipped to challenge these patterns and explore alternative perspectives. For instance, if you're aware that you often react impulsively to criticism, you can work towards developing a more thoughtful response, thereby fostering a non-linear approach to problem solving. Lastly, self-awareness also promotes emotional intelligence, which is vital to non-linear thinking. By understanding your emotions and how they impact your thoughts and actions, you can manage your responses more effectively. This emotional agility enables you to navigate the twists and turns of nonlinear thinking, making it easier to embrace new ideas and perspectives. Chapter 21. Practicing Non-Attachment to Ideas Building on the concept of self-awareness, Another key aspect in nonlinear thinking is the practice of non-attachment to ideas. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't hold beliefs or invest in your ideas. Instead, it's about developing an ability to let go of a particular thought or perspective when evidence or reasoning suggests that it's not the most beneficial or accurate. In this context, non-attachment means not defining your identity or self-worth through your ideas. If you're deeply attached to an idea, you're likely to defend it even in the face of compelling evidence to the contrary. This can lead to cognitive dissonance, a state of mental discomfort that arises from holding contradictory beliefs or values. Research in cognitive psychology suggests that cognitive dissonance can hinder nonlinear thinking. In contrast, non-attachment promotes cognitive flexibility. According to a 2018 study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology, cognitive flexibility is associated with better problem-solving, creativity, and mental health. Practicing non-attachment doesn't come naturally. It requires conscious effort and mindfulness. One effective strategy is to cultivate a growth mindset, as proposed by psychologist Carol Dweck. A growth mindset embraces the idea that intelligence and abilities can be developed over time. This mindset encourages you to see ideas and beliefs as flexible and changeable, rather than fixed. Chapter 22 Navigating the Gray Area Traversing the gray area demands an understanding that not everything is black and white. This is where nonlinear thinking shines as it encourages you to view situations from multiple perspectives, not just one rigid viewpoint. It's about recognizing the complexity of issues and finding solutions that may not be immediately apparent. The gray area, by definition, lacks clarity. It's laden with variables, uncertainties, and potential outcomes. Your goal should be to pilot this ambiguity without getting lost in it. Start by accepting that the lack of clear-cut answers isn't a deficiency, but rather a reflection of life's inherent complexity. Refine your analytical skills to dissect the gray area into manageable parts. Break down complex issues into smaller components, then analyze each one individually. This method, often used in scientific research, helps to make sense of intricate situations by enabling a focused, detailed examination of each part. Embrace the art of questioning. Don't just accept things at face value. Question the why, how, and what if of situations. Research has shown that curious minds are more adept at handling ambiguity, 
as they're open to exploring different possibilities and outcomes. Finally, be patient. Charting the gray area takes time. It's a process of trial and error, of learning and unlearning. It's not about rushing to conclusions, but about taking the time to understand, analyze, and evaluate before making decisions. Chapter 23. Avoiding Assumptions and Biases In your journey towards nonlinear thinking, it's critical to avoid assumptions and biases. Start by challenging assumptions directly, scrutinizing what you take as a given and seeking evidence that either supports or refutes it. Spotting your blind spots early on and questioning default settings will also help in achieving a thorough and unbiased perspective. You mightn't realize it, but assumptions often cloud our judgment and decision-making processes. They're like silent saboteurs, skewing our perceptions and leading us astray from reality. To harness the power of nonlinear thinking, you need to challenge these assumptions directly. Start by identifying your assumptions. They can be as subtle as biases in the sources of information you trust, or as overt as preconceived notions about a situation or person. Once you've pinpointed these, question their validity. Why do you hold these assumptions? Are they based on facts or just feelings? This is where research comes in handy. Use reliable sources to either validate or disprove your assumptions. Don't hesitate to enlist others in challenging your assumptions. People with different perspectives can provide invaluable insights that you might overlook. Remember, it's not about being right or wrong. It's about seeking truth and clarity. Having tackled the task of challenging assumptions, let's now turn our attention to the detection of blind spots. These are areas of your life or thinking where you're not aware of your own biases or assumptions. They're often hidden, but identifying them early can profoundly change your life. Start by understanding that everyone has blind spots, it's human nature. Research shows that people are notoriously bad at identifying their own biases. That's why it's essential you actively seek them out. Constant reflection, self-assessment, and feedback from others are effective ways to uncover these hidden biases. Next, realize that assumptions often hide in these blind spots. Many times, you're not even aware you're making them. You assume things based on your own experiences, beliefs, and values. But these assumptions can limit your thinking, prevent new insights, and even lead to poor decisions. Lastly, remember that identifying blind spots is an ongoing process. It's not something you do once and forget about. You need to constantly monitor your thinking, question your assumptions, and be open to feedback. This can be uncomfortable, but it's a vital part of nonlinear thinking. Nearly every decision we make is influenced by some form of default setting in our minds, pre-existing beliefs, biases, and assumptions that guide our choices. These default settings can often lead us astray, causing us to make decisions based on false assumptions rather than objective facts. Questioning these default settings is a vital part of nonlinear thinking. It involves challenging our preconceived notions and biases, and seeking out new perspectives and information. This can be a difficult process, but it's an essential one if we want to avoid the pitfalls of linear thinking. For example, if you're always assuming that you're right and others are wrong, you're limiting your ability to learn and grow. By questioning this default setting, you open yourself up to the possibility that there may be other valid viewpoints out there. This can lead to greater understanding, improved decision-making, and ultimately, a more successful and fulfilling life. Chapter 24. Unlocking Your Full Potential Shifting your mindset is the first step toward unshackling your full potential. Research indicates that by breaking free from self-imposed limits, you can tap into untapped reserves of creativity and productivity. It's about challenging assumptions, questioning norms, and embracing a nonlinear approach to thinking. Without a doubt, 
Shifting to a mindset that unshackles your full potential involves a significant metamorphosis. Neuroscience research validates that your thoughts can indeed shape your reality. It's a concept known as neuroplasticity, which fundamentally means your brain has the potential to rewire itself based on your thoughts, experiences, and behaviors. To tap into this power, you must first understand that your mindset isn't a fixed attribute. It's a product of your beliefs, attitudes, and values that can be reshaped with conscious effort. This shift doesn't happen overnight, but with persistence, it's entirely possible. Start by identifying limiting beliefs that are holding you back. These self-defeating thoughts are the first obstacle to overcome. Once you've identified them, challenge and replace them with empowering beliefs that align with your goals. Next, cultivate a growth mindset. This means viewing challenges as opportunities for growth rather than setbacks. Embrace the idea that your abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. Breaking free from self-imposed limitations is the next step in releasing your full potential. These limitations are often unconscious, deeply ingrained in your thought patterns, and can profoundly hamper your growth. Research suggests that recognizing and challenging these self-imposed limits is a vital aspect of nonlinear thinking. You've likely heard the phrase, you're your own worst enemy. It's particularly true when it comes to self-limiting beliefs. You might believe you're not smart enough, not creative enough, or simply not capable of achieving your dreams. These beliefs can hold you back from reaching your full potential. Try to identify these limiting beliefs. What's holding you back? Once you've pinpointed them, challenge them. Ask yourself, are these beliefs based on facts or just assumptions? Often, you'll find they're the latter. Next, replace these limiting beliefs with empowering ones. If you've always believed you're not creative, tell yourself you are. Practice this belief until it becomes a part of you. It's not easy, it takes time. But research shows this process can lead to substantial personal growth and success. Break those limits and watch yourself soar. In your journey to nonlinear thinking, you'll traverse uncharted territories, dispelling biases and breaking free from the chains of conventional wisdom. It's a dance with uncertainty, a game of embracing ambiguity. But remember, it's not about perfection, it's about progress. Keep challenging yourself, keep asking better questions, and let the power of nonlinearity propel you towards your full potential. The little changes in your thinking today can trigger a cascade of transformations tomorrow. Thanks for listening to or reading this from Audiobooks Office.